So the story goes, in the 1930s, a notorious philanderer, you know, womanizer, just think of uh, Don Draper, born 30 years earlier. Excuse me. And he was supposedly punished by his angry girlfriend who had had enough of his extracurricular activities. So she used a ton of cayenne in her fried chicken recipe as payback. The problem was he loved it and Nashville Hot Chicken was born. I don't know if that's true. No, it, it is. I read it on the internet. It has to be true. While this recipe is damn good at its core, I decided to make a few adjustments that I personally find better. Serious claim, right? Well, this is Kitchen Serious. I've got a five pound bird here that I'll break down into the typical eight pieces. Not only is this a cheaper option, but I also think it makes for a better end result. But if you do want to buy your chicken already cut up, well, I promise not to tell anyone. While you're at it, forget buying the overpriced breast meat. To quote a well-respected local chef, when I asked them about cuts for the classic fried chicken, <laughs> they said, white meat is for suckers. They weren't telling me anything I didn't already know, but it's nice to be in complete agreement on this subject. Drums and thighs have a higher fat content, thereby giving them not only more flavor, but also more moisture throughout the cooking process. So if you're buying chicken pieces, go for the lower cost and tastier cuts like drums and thighs. These are also closer in size to one another and will all cook at relatively the same rate. Breasts, on the other hand, are best to cut in half to decrease their cook time, which is important because they cook faster. Okay, so I've got two breasts, two drums, two thighs, and two wings. Now I'm gonna put a brine mixture together of two cups of buttermilk, a generous pour of pickle juice, and about a quarter cup or so of hot sauce. And I've got a little container that fits all eight pieces perfectly. I've experimented with brine times and have settled at three to three and a half hours. Any longer and I found the meat starts to break down, get a little chewy. While that's brining, it gives me a little time to get the dredge mixture ready. This is where the magic happens. I have a base of one and a half cups of flour along with a quarter cup of cornstarch. Next is my own spice mixture that's been tweaked over the course of many months. And not to brag, but I think I've reached my own personal hot chicken nirvana. So we've got four tablespoons of cayenne, two tablespoons of sweet paprika, and here we have one tablespoon of ground black pepper, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of chipotle powder, one teaspoon of ground coriander, a teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of mustard powder, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and lastly, pulling everything together in a sweet embrace, one tablespoon of brown sugar. Give it a good mix, and now before we put it in the flour mixture, we're actually gonna take out a quarter cup and reserve that. Now we get the rest mixed in with the cornstarch and flour mixture and we're ready to go. All right, so after three and a half hours, time to pull the chicken out and the buttermilk brine is gonna become our wet portion of the dredge station. We're just gonna add a few eggs to this and we're good to go. Let me zoom in here. As I was pulling the chicken out, I let it drip a little bit into the dry mixture. This is gonna create these little crumbles that when they're fried up, they're gonna add a lot of extra texture. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna double dredge these bad boys. So the chicken's gonna go into the flour and then into the buttermilk brine and then back in the flour. So it's gonna get two coats of breading. Just a little tip in case you're new to the dredging process is make sure and have a wet hand and a dry hand. So my left hand here is gonna be the one that dips it into the liquid. And my right hand is gonna be the one that works with the dry ingredients to get it on the chicken. And anyone who's ever dredged knows what I'm talking about. 
If you don't do this, eventually you'll have about 20 layers of flour on your fingertips. So I want to avoid that if at all possible. And here we go, everything's been double breaded and it looks fantastic. Now if you wanted to throw this in the hot oil immediately, I would not fault you. But if you're able, allow the dredge to sit for 15 minutes on the chicken first. This will really improve the crunch factor of this chicken, so try not to skip over this step. For oil, I'm using vegetable, but you could also use canola, peanut, or any high smoke point oil. Try to maintain a temperature between 325 and 350. Remember that as you add your chicken, it's going to go down quite a bit, so don't overcrowd the pan. And in hindsight, I probably should have done this in more of a Dutch oven versus my cast iron pan, but I went with this to try to get something that retains heat a little bit better. Now since I'm doing a shallow fry, these will need to flip after 5-6 to six minutes to hit an internal temperature of 165. Keep working in batches and hold in the oven as you go. Once these are out, it's time to grab that quarter cup of reserve seasoning and add one cup of the fry oil. Give this a good mix and, well, you know what to do. My mouth is watering as I'm editing this video, I gotta be honest. It's impossible to tell you how good this is, so I suppose you'll just have to give it a try. Thanks so much for checking out Kitchen Serious, everybody. I will see you next time.